In today's video, we're going to be talking about GNOME 48. Now that it's in beta and has been released, so I'm able to test it. We're currently using it now. So if I open this up, you can see we're using the GNOME 48 beta. And if you can't see, now you can. I don't know where the hell this came from. I don't know how to do it. I don't know where to find out it is. So don't even ask, please. It annoys me because I wish I knew where it was to back it up. Now, HDR is enabled on both of my monitors, both meaning the left and the far right. The center monitor doesn't have HDR, but as you can see, high dynamic range is enabled. I haven't installed blur my shell, so as you can see, the background's not blurred. But here's a fix that you're going to need for HDR. So if both monitors are, what do you call, call it, um, grayed out, in other words, lacking of color, and not normal SDR function, head to sound and select one of your HDMI audios until both screens fix themselves. It might take a bit, but that works. Okay. And uh, you could also just reboot. That tends to work as well. I don't know what's going on. Something's not sticking, but that's the fix. Okay. So there's a lot of things to cover. There's a list of topics that we'll cover, including new UI and fonts, uh, map changes, battery charge limiting features. There's a ton of cool stuff. So the one thing that did definitely happen is if you head in here, I'm going to head into my thumbnails folder. Did you see how instant that was? Thumbnails now load so much faster. And I'm, I'm honestly here for it because that's brilliant. Cause I have a ton of thumbnails that I don't delete and I don't know why they're just, they're just here in case I want to reuse one of them, I guess like this one, I reuse this one a lot. And, uh, that's another thing. The fonts have changed and I don't notice that the fonts have changed. Like I'm trying to notice, but they it just, everything looks the same to me. It always has looked the same to me. So there's that, but, um, well-being panel, huh? There's a well-being panel in the GNOME Control Center. Interesting. So we open this up. And uh, well-being. There it is. Review the amount of time you're spent. So this is your screen time. Why didn't they just name it screen time? Why? It would have been a lot easier. It doesn't need to sound fancy. As you can see, it's right here uh, in this section, which is nice. But yeah, you get to limit the amount of screen time that you set on your PC, which could be really, really good or really bad, depending on your sanity level. So HDR support again, right click display settings, and there it is toggle on and off. And it does again work with variable refresh rate and multiple other technologies, which is very, very nice. And uh, well, the OSD notifications, so the new on-screen display notification for headphone connection makes it easier to manage your audio devices. Uh, there's a SystemMD Sys plugin, which is nice. Now includes experimental yada yada for smoother updates. Improved color management, so enhanced color management and detection on preferred primary devices. I wonder if that includes with HDR on, so if we're able to go to color management. Is it going to show my monitor? <gasps> does it does show my monitor okay so does this mean i'm able to change to the bt 2020 or the rec 2020 i think it's called I'm not really sure is there just a default one i could switch to there's this one this profile may not work correctly so I'm going to pause and we're going to try to find the BT2020. I managed to add it. We're going to try to find the profile that I just added. Hopefully, uh, and there it is. So did that do anything? That's from 2016. Now it said there was problems for the other profile, right? That's the main issue. And I get that that might be a problem. But what if I added it anyway? There we go. It's enabled. And honestly, I'm, uh, I'm noticing a difference, but I mean, 
it looks and it functions like it should. I need to open this back up. Sorry about that. I need to head back over here. So no maps. Let's talk about no maps. So we're into uh, auto updates. By the way, there's been accessibility improvements before we even get started on that. Updates to Orca screen reader to improve event processing and clipboard enhancements, which has been great. And um, no maps has been updated to the Modus V2 API. So we go to maps. And let's say we go to where I live. We go to the downtown area. Okay, right about here. Uh, what does this button do? Route planner, main menu. This is favorites. This is our layers. What is this? That's just not even a thing. So let's do a route from sit uh halifax citadel okay to let's say halifax uh city hall okay look at that that is indeed a correct so this is a high school this is uh citadel hill no is this is this citadel hill yes this is Citadel Hill. this is not the high school i believe the high school is uh, down here ish somewhere. I don't remember exactly where because I never actually went to that horrible high school. And uh, City Hall's right there. So, this is indeed correct. I don't know why they would want you to go all the way around like this. Your best idea would be come to this corner and then just go straight down. Like, you don't need to be walking the whole way. You can just walk down the hill. So it's wrong, but I get what it's trying to do. It's trying to show you the current pathway that you can take. Cool. All right. So there's a uh, bike. There's car. And there's transit. Interesting. Yeah. There's no actual bus that goes up here. By the way so remember that so that's pretty interesting that they got that up and running and i already mentioned nautilus follow manager loading stuff faster no uh the gnome remote desktop is preparing for vulcan and va api hardware acceleration god damn <laughs> no remote desktop is just ahead of its time now with all hopes I'm going to list off every actual feature here for you. So new UI and fonts. Gnome has introduced a new default UI and fonts. The UI font has been changed from uh, Cantrell to a modified version called Edueta Sans. And a new monospace fault called Edueta Mono has replaced the source code pro. Battery charging limit. A new feature allows users to limit battery charge to extend battery life. Nice. Uh, well-being panel, I showed you that. ODST notifications, I cannot show you that because I can't connect headphones to this thing and have it pop up. I could, but I have to bring up my PC itself. System MD Sys Update plugin, great. I showed you the improved uh, color management that allows us to do color management while we're using HDR. Map updates we went over, file management stuff we went over, GNOME desktop, new wallpapers. So refresh default wallpapers. Really, can I have a look at what they actually are? Oh, it's that one. Okay, so that's not actually anything new. Uh, removed GNOME shell extensions. This module has been removed from the GNOME core, although it's still being developed separately. Great. Other changes is the web browser that comes with GNOME has improvements to history dialogue and other refinements. GNOME calendar has enhancements to event dialogue editor. Again, HDR and other improvements to the power area and other additions. Really, the power area? A power area? Oh, new icons. It looks the same here, great. Uh, no remote desktop, yep. I think we went over everything, which is nice. As for HDR gaming, I have no idea. I haven't tested it yet. I'm gonna do that here real soon. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry it wasn't as detailed as possible but we went over everything that we needed to do uh hdr support means brighter whites deeper blacks and overall more vibrant and realistic display okay i'll see you guys in the next video 
Bye, everybody.